Welcome to Science Easy Tech channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about digestion, absorption and metabolism of lipids or fats. Already I have posted a video on lipids, its introduction, classification, dietary sources, recommended dietary allowances as well as its deficiency and excess. If you have not watched it, I have given the link in description box, suggested end card, I card also. Or you can watch our channel playlist, BSC Nursing First Year Nutrition. Before moving on to the topic, if you are new to Science Easy Tech channel, just take a moment to subscribe our channel and also to press the notification bell icon in order to get connected with our latest updates. Let's move on to the topic. Digestion, absorption, metabolism and storage of fats or lipids. The fats and oils what you are going to consume in the diet will not be digested, absorbed and metabolized as it is. So this complex fat molecules should be broken down into smaller components which can be easily digested, absorbed and metabolized by the body. So the complex fat molecules should be broken down into smaller components like glycerol and fatty acids so only this glycerol and fatty acids are utilized by our body so the fats and oils what you are taking in the food should be converted into smaller particles like glycerol and fatty acids then only it can be digested absorbed and metabolized by the body so for this process there are several steps like digestion absorption and metabolism as well as storage we are going to discuss in this video first let me tell what happens in digestion see first the digestion no you are taking the fat food fatty food so in the mouth there is no chemical digestion in the mouth there is no chemical digestion so in the mouth what is happening the bigger fat molecules or the bigger fatty substances food substances is broken down into smaller substances by means of what by means of chewing and in the mouth what is there saliva is there so it is going to get mixed with the saliva so in the mouth there is no chemical digestion and only the fat is going to be broken down into smaller particles by chewing and it is going to mix with saliva Next, after mouth, slowly by means of the uh, food will be entering into the esophagus by uh, peristaltic movements uh, and it will be entering, entering into the stomach. So, in the stomach, what happens? The food will be, the fatty food will be mixing with the gastric juices uh, like hydrochloric acid and one important enzyme which is going to be secreted in the gastric uh, uh, thing that is in the stomach is gastric lipase anything completing with ASE is an enzyme so this gastric lipase from the stomach as well as the pancreatic lipase from the pancreas are going to help in are going to help in what this fat digestion so only this gastric lipase and pancreatic lipase is not enough for the fat to get digested it needs one more friend in this process who is that friend yes it is nothing but bile okay bile where it is secreted we all know that bile is secreted in the liver and it is stored in the gallbladder without bile the fat cannot be digested without bile the fat cannot be digested because only with the help of the bile a process called emulsification a process called emulsification will be taking place suppose if a bile is not there this process will not be taking place what is this emulsification process yes the larger complex fat molecules will be broken down into 
smaller molecules so because of this the total surface area of the fat molecules will be increased okay the larger fat molecules will be broken down into smaller globules or smaller particles so that on every side of the smaller fat globules the enzymes can be acting over it so easily the pancreatic lipase and the gastric lipase can act on the can act on the fat molecules by means of emulsification process next we will see the presence of fat in the duodenum stimulates the secretion of bile from the gall bladder so i told no how this uh, bile is secreted see this bile so once the fat uh, enters into the duodenum the bile will be secreting from the liver and it will be st uh, stored in the gall bladder i told no so from the gall bladder the bile will be released into the duodenum duodenum is nothing but the first part of the small intestine at the same time the pancreatic lipase also will be released so all this will be what breaking down the larger fat molecules into smaller particles so that the total surface area will be increased okay the total surface area increases and thereby the enzymes will be acting on all the all sides of the fat molecules okay next the alkaline nature of bile the alkaline nature of bile so bile is also alkaline in nature pancreatic lipase is also alkaline in nature so what it does means it removes glycerol and fatty acid from the triglyceride molecule so it removes fatty acids from the triglyceride molecule so what happens the triglyceride will be converted into diglyceride and monoglyceride okay the diglyceride and monoglyceride as well as glycerol and fatty acids okay the rest of the diglycerides are also converted into and monoglycerides are also converted into fatty acids and glycerol by, by means of enteric lipase okay so here i what i told the alkaline nature of pancreatic lipase and by will be removing the fatty acids from the triglycerides to form monoglyceride diglyceride and glycerol and fatty acids and the, when it enters into the small intestine again the enteric lipase enteric means intestine so in the intestine also enteric lipase will be secreted and this enteric lipase will be breaking this monoglyceride and diglyceride into glycerol and fatty acids so the end product of fat digestion is glycerol and fatty acid okay so you may have a doubt whether all the fat has been uh, uh, digested sometimes there may be undigested fat some part of the fat may not be digested that fat will be excreted in the feces that fat will be excreted in the feces so this is called as steatorrhea this is called as steatorrhea that is uh, uh, the excess fat no that or the undigested fat will be excreted in the feces no that is called as steatorrhea okay next we will move on to absorption okay how this is absorption taking place so the end product of fat digestion is what the end product of fat digestion is fatty acids and glycerols see here how in digestion bile has played a very important role for emulsification similarly here also what it does bile is very important in absorption because fat is not soluble in water whether you can mix oil with water no okay so if you want to mix oil with water some emulsification agent you need uh, here in order to make the fat absorb into the blood stream you need bile bile's help so what this bile will be doing the bile will be attaching attaching itself to what to glycerol and fatty acids bile plus glycerol plus fatty acid this complex is called as what yes this complex is called as chylomicrons so with the help of bile the absorption will be taking place easily into the intestine and the fatty acids and glycerols will be going into the blood stream easily once uh, its work has been got over again what the bile 
first initially in the intestine it is getting attached and it is absorbed in, from the intestinal wall and it enters into the blood stream after once its uh, duty is over then again what it is relieved from that so again it detaches okay again it detaches in the blood it will be detaching the what glycerol and fatty acids and it again it is reabsorbed into the intestine and some other fatty acids and glycerol are there no the same process will be continued it will be attaching first and it uh, leaves the glycerol and fatty acids into the bloodstream there it gets detached and again it comes to the intestine and the same process continues till the last fat uh, uh, fatty acid and glycerol is get, going to get absorbed okay so this is with regard to absorption since fats are insoluble in water they cannot be directly absorbed into the intestine and bloodstream without making them absorbable bile helps in absorption of fat by forming a complex that is called as chylomicrons with fatty acids and glycerol which is absorbed by the intestinal wall once absorbed bile separates and returns to the intestine to recombine with fatty acids and glycerol and the process continues this only i have explained till now so everything he has been given in a diagrammatic representation you can see this diagram see here in mouth there is no digestion once it enters into the stomach mixing with gastric juices and gastric lipase takes place okay so the fat digestion starts in the stomach so once it enters into the intestine already gastric lipase is there and from the pancreas pancreatic lipase will be released and from the liver and gallbladder bile is released so what happens so this will be the bile is going to act as what agent emulsifying agent the through the process of emulsification the pancreatic lipase and bile both are alkaline medium they remove the they remove the fatty acid from the triglycerides so we leading to diglyceride monoglyceride fatty acid and glycerol okay then again what happens this uh, diglyceride monoglyceride fatty acid and glycerol in the presence of enteric lipase again it is converted into the final product is fatty acid and glycerol okay so how it is absorbed into the lymphatic system or blood stream it is absorbed by means of chylomicrons what is this chylomicron complex yes bile fatty acid and glycerol the undigested fat where it is coming it is excreted in the feces next we will see the storage of fats where the fat is stored yes the fat is stored in the adipose tissue in normal human beings with normal weight there will be 10 to 15% of the body weight is made up of adipose tissue whereas in obese uh, person it may be increased up to 30% of the body weight is made up of obese adipose tissue so okay in normal healthy individual with normal weight body weight adipose tissue constitutes about 10 to 15% whereas in case of obesity it may be increased up to 30% next to moving on to fat metabolism fatty acids are oxidized by certain enzymes in the tissues to form carbon dioxide and water so fatty acids what process it is undergoing oxidation by certain enzymes in the tissues to form carbon dioxide and water one molecule of palmitic acid is converted to eight molecules of acetic acid will be on oxidation gives 16 molecules of carbon dioxide and 16 molecules of water one molecule of palmitic acid eight molecules of acetic acid on oxidation gives 16 molecules of carbon dioxide and 16 molecules of water so this oxidation process is called as tricarboxylic acid cycle or tca cycle tricarboxylic acid cycle or tca cycle which this metabolism you will be learning in detail in biochemistry okay in biochemistry for first year bsc nursing students okay fat is also synthesized in the body from carbohydrates by a complex mechanism okay so if the fat only if you are taking fat only you are uh, you will not uh, uh, get uh, this uh, fat uh, metabolism even excess carbohydrates will also undergo a complex process that is gluconeogenesis that is from non carbohydrate sources you are getting the energy like that and all no so here um, the fat also will be produced by means of 
carbohydrates through a complex process which also will be dealt in detail in biochemistry okay so hope this video gives a clear understanding of fatty digestion absorption and metabolism as well as storage if you still have any doubts feel free to post your doubts in comment section and watch my channel playlist for more nutrition related videos thank you friends keep supporting to science easy tech channel don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you once again